The scripture reading for today is from the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7, and from the New Testament, the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation, thou hast increased its joy. They rejoice before me as with joy at the harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the right rod of his oppressor, thou hast broken on this day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling, tramping warrior in battle, tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish in it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Canarius was the governor of Syria. And they all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up to Galilee from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the, them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to him, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the, when the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they with haste found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known that what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. This morning, um, our Reverend Suk Chahan will deliver a uh, Christmas sermon entitled The Identity of This Vulnerable Child, after which Reverend Hosomi will bring a message of Japanese entitled Great Message of Joy. Jesus Christ is born. Thank you, Father God, for sending your son, Jesus Christ. He comes in flesh. He becomes one of us to save us. Lord, this morning we celebrate his birth and just orient ourselves to your words. Open our hearts, mind, and ears to listen to your voice and make an impact in our hearts and minds. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning, the Advent waiting and longing is over. Christ is born. Amen? We just sang joy to the world. How much of joy did it bring to you? by singing the hymn. 
today, Christmas Day, are you filled with joy as massively as the eruption of volcanoes? As you know, Mauna Loa had recently erupted, and the eruption of volcano may disrupt human lives. It can change water patterns according to science. So this morning, the joy of Christ's birth is disrupting your life pattern. Or what's going on in the world and in your life wipes out the joy. So we live amid the pandemic, gun violence, oppression, opioid crisis, poverty, and so on, and even threat of democracy. So the destructive socioeconomic inequity resulting from the systematic racism, sexism, and poverty hits us in our daily lives. The bleak time that we live in heightens the need for good news, right? The first scripture reading, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7, describes the prophet Isaiah's prophecy about Yahweh's promise, the birth of Messiah amid the gloomy situation. The depressing situation that mirrors our current situation creates the undercurrent fear, anxiety, and even a sense of hopelessness. However, the passage tells us that's not the end, as it juxtaposes salvation with judgment, light with darkness, and freedom with oppression. The deep darkness in the text refers to war and invasion by the Assyrians in 700 BCE. How about us who live in the 21st century? Where are you experiencing fear, anxiety, distress, powerlessness, or hopelessness? I'm sure you've heard the hand of Messiah countless times at this time of the year. So thus, we are familiar with the message of Isaiah 9. And familiarity can be both good and bad, but in this case, it is bad because the familiarity with the passage puts us into autopilot mode. This morning, I invite you to get out of autopilot mode and to pay a close attention to the reign of the true king who will turn the situation upside down. A life of oppression, darkness, and uncertainty will turn into the life of freedom, hope, and true security. Glorious rays of joy dissipate the present reality of anguish and distress. Like the morning sunlight dispels of darkness, doom and shining light will break through the deep darkness that has covered the land. The heavy yoke of oppression that has been burdening God's people will be taken away forever. And all signs of enemies of destruction will disappear as the shining morning sunlight evaporates morning dews. The shining light refers to the birth of Messiah. The baby is born. The birth of a child gives us everything. The birth of a new child changed the 
course of human history. I will bring you a new opportunity for the fullness of life and restoration of justice and peace. She brings a hope beyond the broken state of this world. The hope of a child shines light in the darkness. What child is this? The person narrated in the Gospel of Luke gives an answer to this question. And I'm sure you are familiar with the birth narrative in the Gospel of Luke. So the beginning of the text portrays a backdrop of the Messiah's birth. Verse 1 says, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The historical context help us understand the titles of the Messiah in those days. The emperor is identified with the prince of peace and savior of the world. The name Caesar Augustus means exalted or sacred one. She's achievement to end a long period of war entitles him with that title, the Prince of Peace and the Savior of the World. The Roman Empire epitomizes evil power with the overwhelming dark and deep darkness loaded with exploitations, oppression, and violence. The Book of Revelation describes Rome as a red, fiery dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems in his heads. And the following verses describe the scene in heaven. And this same dragon is about to snatch. It appears in front of a woman who is clothed with the sun and who is about to give a birth. And the dragon is about to snatch the baby away. And God intervenes and takes the baby to God and gives a throne upon his birth. The reference to Emperor Augustus to aristocrat Quirinius and the registration reverberates the same kind of evil described in Isaiah chapter 9. The scripture tells us there was no room for Mary and Joseph in the inn in Bethlehem. And remember, Bethlehem is Joseph's hometown. And it sounds, it doesn't sound right that they have no room to stay in their own hometown. Considering the fact that the family unit was the orbit around which everything evolved in the first century Jewish culture. Why none of Joseph's extended family offer them a place to stay. Perhaps because they didn't want to associate themselves with Joseph, who was about to marry a social outcast Mary, who had prenatal pregnancy. Mary could have been stoned to death if Joseph publicized it. So none of his family, extended family members invited them to stay. So how about you? Are you willing to invite a disgraceful family member who are willing to shut the door of hospitality to them? Jesus is born to Mary and Joseph, and more importantly, he's born unto us. 
This entails that Jesus is not an ordinary child. Born unto us signifies the Messiah's birth for all humankind, not just for the Jews. She is the world's savior and king. So Christ is born unto us to save humanity. So how is the king of kings born? She chooses to come in the form of a baby, laid in a manger. What is manger? Manger is a trough where farmers' animals like horses, donkeys, and cattle eat. So it's not a tidy, clean place. Can you imagine any lawyer placed in a manger? And besides, Jesus is born in Bethlehem, a little town. He is not born in Rome, nor Bethlehem. 700 years before the Messiah's birth, the prophet Micah prophesied the birthplace is going to be Bethlehem in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrata, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel and whose origin of old and of ancient days. The birth narrative underscores Messiah's birth embodies humility and vulnerability. These details symbolizes the arrival of the new child will rule the world in an unexpected way outside the existing power system of Rome and Jerusalem. The Messiah will turn and subvert the existing hegemony of power. The newborn baby will be the true king, the true prince of peace and savior unlike Caesar Augustus, who accomplished peace through military power. Jesus accomplishes peace with his self-giving love on the cross in our place. The passage also suggests some important details about the first announcement of Messiah's birth. Let us look at the recipients of the angelic annunciation of Jesus' birth. An angel of the world appears not to powerful people like a king, governors, or religious leaders, but to shepherds who are living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over flocks at night. According to verse 8, and have you wondered all these years why the angel appeared to shepherds, not to powerful people? Here are some possible answers. The renowned evangelist Billy Graham, by the way, he was a 20th century very famous evangelist, but the MV generation doesn't know who he is. So Matt is not here, but Matt, he has no idea who Billy Graham is. Maybe he's uh, joining us via Zoom today. So Billy Graham believes the angelic annunciation of Christ's birth demonstrates God's love to all people who are shepherds in the first century Judea. They represent the outcasts, the marginalized, and the lowly. 
Yes, uh, Graham states, since God's love is for all people, he chooses to reveal his love to the lowly. And I would dig deeper. To me, the appearance of angel to shepherds foretells Jesus' solidarity with the lonely and the marginalized. All the four Gospels tells us Jesus welcomes and hands out and invites them to the feast table of the kingdom of God. And some theologians point out God wants to humiliate the religious leaders by showing them to the enemy. And Paul says, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. Another important detail is in the place of angels' appearance. The angels appears to shepherds in an open field, out of nowhere, not in the halls of power. So like the lowly bird in a humble time, Bethlehem, God's glorious presence encounters in a lowly place. The messenger brings news of joy and God's presence in powerlessness. The angel proclaims, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great news, great joy, which will be to all people. For this is born to you this day to the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. God through the angel with the multitude of heavenly hosts announces peace is achieved through Jesus' birth in verse 14. He says, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth to humanity. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, proclaims in Luke chapter 1, verse 79, Jesus will bring light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Jesus himself affirms peace in John 14, 7. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives to I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, in Isaiah 9, 6, lists up the names of the Messiah. And the prophet Isaiah proclaims three other names besides Prince of Peace. The Messiah has three other titles, a wonderful counselor, or it's a literal translation, a wonder of a counselor. When do people seek a counselor? A counselor in the secure, in the secular world, they seek a counselor for healing when they feel troubled. I don't want to compare Jesus Christ to a psychologist, for his wisdom surpasses human understanding, wisdom, and comprehension. This is why Isaiah calls a wonder. Jesus is a wonderful counselor through the Holy Spirit. Jesus counsels our problems and gives us peace and comfort. He enables us to overcome our limitations and to transcend the situation in face of troubles. And it should stir wonder in us because his, his wisdom is far greater than anything else. Jesus refers himself to wisdom in this way. 
the Queen of Sheba will also stand us stand up against the generation on Judgment Day and condemn it. For she came from a distant world to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Now summon greater than Solomon is here in Matthew chapter 14, verse 42. Another name for Jesus is Mighty God. How about Jesus, who has come in flesh, become Mighty God? The four Gospels show many examples of Jesus as Mighty God. He has power to forgive sins, power to heal, power to command nature, and power to drive out demons. This type of supernatural power belongs to God and Jesus. The everlasting Father is somewhat peculiar. We have no difficulty to understand the everlasting part of the Messiah. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, say, the baby born in Bethlehem was from the beginning with God, and Jesus described himself, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, I am the one who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty One, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. So how about the word Father? Does the prophet Isaiah say, baby Jesus is a father, as in the God figure has? I'm going to cite the famous English preacher Charles Spurgeon, as he shed lights on this quizzical term, everlasting father. He comments, the connection of the word father with the word everlasting allows us to understand our Lord is everlasting as the Father, since he himself called the everlasting Father. We've explored the four names of Jesus this morning. Of course, there are far more names of Jesus in the Bible. We are celebrating this morning the birth of Christ because the Savior has come and will come again to end the misery of this world. Let us follow Jesus' footsteps to become peacemakers as he comes to make peace between God and us. The joy of Savior's birth enables us to redeem freedom from the bondage of fear, anxiety, and distress. Is the Messiah's birth good news to you as it was thousands of years ago? The shepherd who received good news told everyone what they saw and heard because the good news brought great joy. That great joy erupted like a volcano and consequently disrupted their life pattern. Like the shepherds, I invite you to go out to spread goodness that brings joy to all people in me. Amen.